My name is Alex. Um, I'll be interviewing you today. So thanks for taking the time to do this interview with me. Thank you. It's an honor. How's it going today? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's a bit rainy weather here in Brazil, a bit colder than usual, but it's still very nice. Doing a few interviews tonight, so today, so it's nice to be talking about the record. To, so I'm very excited. Oh, nice. I'm in Minnesota, and it's also raining here, so we have the same type of weather, a little bit cooler. Oh, yeah, okay, so we're connected. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So go ahead and get started here. How do you feel about the album now that it's about to come out? Well, a uh, sense of relief, you know, because it's done. Mm -hmm. All the, the, you know, all this stress and time and effort that we put into it. I mean, now we see that it was worth it. Also a sense of pr pride. We're very proud of what we've done, what we've achieved as a band, you know. Mm -hmm. the artistic, artistic results, the creativity and the passion, stuff that we put into it and we could make into music. It was, it was, it is very, very nice. It's a feeling of relief and pride. Oh, nice. And I also want to ask you, I know you guys recently just signed on with Atomic Fire Records. How has yeah. the impacted the album's creation and its upcoming release? Well, actually the, actually, the creation itself wasn't impacted that much because when we signed with Atomic Fire, the, 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 the album was practically done. It okay. was more of, or, more of a thing that, okay, now that the album is, is finishing, it's being finished, let's try to, to release this year. But the, the previous record company, they didn't want to release this year. They wanted to postpone to next year, and we didn't want that. So we started to look for alternative and partners that would be excited, you know, with the album, with the project, releasing this year in November, so we could tour in the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. So Atomic Fire popped up as very interested on us. Marcus uh, said he was a fan from the beginning. Um, Fabio Leone is a friend of Atomic Fire people. Uh, so it was a conjunction of factors, and I'm very, very satisfied, very happy with the partnership with them. Yeah, it sounds like it was simply meant to be, especially with all those things in common and him being a fan and they already knowing Fabio. You're so right. It was perfect. Yeah. It seems like your cat wants a little bit of attention too in this interview, huh? It does. <laughs> He's been showing off in lots of interviews that I've been doing. I mean, he'll be more famous than me afterwards. What's his name? <laughs> this one is Padre, which means priest in Portuguese. I so I have it. one called Padre and the other one is called Morcego, which means bat. So Aww. it's the priest and the bat. I love it. Love it. <laughs> So on this album, I know you mentioned that you already had it done when you were signing on with the record company. Did you have like a, do you have like a favorite song on the album? Ah, uh, that's a hard one because they're so different from each other. They express so many different layers, you know, of mm -hmm. our musical environment, of different layers of perspectives of different emotions, you know, different perspectives of same emotion, same insights that we, I mean, it's it's a hard one. It's like to, it's like picking up a preferred uh, son or, or daughter. It's funny you say that a lot of people say that and other people are like, yeah, this song is so much better than all the other ones, but it's true when you write them, it's like you love them all. So it's hard to pick a favorite. Yeah, it's very hard. And it's, it's very, it's very, for me, it's still very, um, I don't know what people would think about those songs, you know? I don't know if people will, will be in, like, uh, they will have a common sense about which is the favorite, because we have mm -hmm. a, also, we have, despite the variety of styles, we also have a variety of fans, you know? Some mm -hmm. fans more into power metal and some other fans are more into progressive stuff. Some other they like the mixtures with the Brazilian stuff that we do. 
So it's it's hard to, to even predict which will be the favorite for like for everyone. Right. Just because it sounds like it's so different. It's kind of hard to figure out which one's going to be the fan favorite. But I guess you'll know eventually. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's a huge part of the fans that like the power metal stuff. So songs like Ride Into the Storm and and Gods of the World, Generation Warriors. These songs might be the popular for the for the power metal fan base. Okay. But not for me, you know. I mean, I like but I like all of them. <laughs> well, there's your predictions. We'll see when the fans hear it, which one is the favorite then. Yeah, okay. So how did you come up with the album cover? I mean, it's it's very unique. I love it. I haven't seen anything like this, but it seems like there's a lot of things going on. So how did you guys come up with that idea? Well, um, I wanted to have the image of an angel, right? Because it's part of us, you know, I really like uh, when it comes to spirituality, the study of angels, you know, and demons in the same ways. Uh, something that I always like this that symbol you know it's right. more it's it's not religion but more like theology I like to, to observe that to read about that and I like this, this and it's been a concept that we've been speaking about for a while so I wanted an angel but I wanted the angel of death and I wanted death and I wanted to be tropical and and warm. So I started to throw um, prompts on mid-journey and other, other artificial intelligence uh, designer creators, right? So I had a bunch of, of ideas for the angel of that. Then I sent this to, to a designer, um, Eric Pasqua. And then he, with all of those inspirations, the rainforest, the angel of death, the white feather wings, you know, I wanted it to be soft, to be to be light, but still dark in a way. So it's 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 a combination of many many thoughts about the impressions that people should get out of the cover artwork. And also we've combined some some Easter eggs from from other cover artwork. So there are a lot of different different hidden thing different he, hidden images that make some kind of references to our previous artworks too okay are there any easter eggs that you can disclose to us so we might have a hint well uh the white wings is angels cry then there's holy land i find it somewhere else that should be there should be like um southern cross or something the the lock here in the eye of in the in the in the head in the front of the of the angel is from Secret Garden. Then there's this bunny with a bat, which is from the Laura Consurgence. It's it's all it's all you, you, if you look you find them all. Okay, well on this the cover again, I think it's really beautiful. I love how it's like all dark and then you see the wings. It's just so like neon almost white. So it just lights it up. So it makes that perfect light and darkness that you were looking to achieve. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so how has your role within the band evolved over the years? Oh, I'm the guy who persists, you know. I'm the one who's who are always, who's always... um looking forward, try to motivate people into continuing. It's not an easy task to be in a metal band, you know, to be a professional musician in a metal band, for me, which means that you're paying your bills out of it. So, you know, finding a compromise in between um, commercial value for this band and expressing yourself as an artist also, you know, finding mm -hmm. room to be truthful to your ideals you know that I'm the I'm the kind of guy who is always showing them that it's worth it, the purpose, the mission, trying to motivate everyone to let's let's keep going. Let's do another one. Yeah. So you're like the motivator of the band. You'd say that. <laughs> well, that's always good because I'm sure fans would be sad if you guys just decided to stop. So <laughs> Yeah, that's true. 
So what was the first song that you wrote for this album? Well, um, the first song that I wrote for this album was Tears of Blood, but only this, the, only the musical part. I haven't, uh, I haven't written the the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the the oldest idea that I had, you know, for the song. I started to write this one in the very beginning of of the pandemics in two thousand twenty, and the first lyric I've written for this album was "Tired of Changes." Mm -hmm. So. You know, when we started the production, Dennis was already here in in Brazil. We were uh, working on the song and finishing up all the, the 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 structures and everything. When we had the tide of changes, the song, the musical part, all done, that was the one that I uh, that I wrote the lyrics. The first that, that was the first one that I wrote the lyrics to, because uh, I was very inspired by the moods. You know, the different the different moods in the song. I wanted to talk about this. You know, there's a, a certain a, a certainty of our fate, and right. we need to adapt ourselves in a very volatile, volatile, volatile world. Yeah, volatile or or impermanent world. Mm -hmm. So, and also we get the we it's, it's we often get the feeling of defeat when. We have a plan and we we have our expectations frustrated. So how to deal with that, you know, the uncertainty of life, the the a permanent destiny. So that's what uh, that that's what I talked about on the tide of changes. Well, I love that. That is like so real, especially, you know, in life nowadays, how things are going. It's like you look up the things, things are good, things are bad. It's yeah. I think that's yeah, so you need, need to have some emotional strength to live through the to reality nowadays. For sure, especially nowadays. Yes. So with that being the first song that you wrote for the album, how did it set the tone for the rest of the album? Oh well, we have two main concerns when we start when we when we start to 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 write the album. The first is that we know what would be the expectations from the fans? The fans, they usually want to hear a bit of everything you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. But they also want to be surprised, you know, by fresh music, by something that sounds fresh. And it's always very, very hard to find this balance on, you know, if after 30 years of music, you, you have a lot of to be compared to. I mean, they compare you. They always compare you to to your past, but not to what you are now. And after the pandemics, I mean, I think we've changed a lot, but I also believed that people has changed too. I think <laughs> we don't have, it's hard to evaluate how deep we've changed inside, you know? Basically our lives are still the same, but I see that people, they, they're hurt. They have some scars, you know? But, but since it's, like everyone's got the same kind of scar, we it's normal. It's normal to be hurt. It's normal to to so it's also normal to hide it. It's also normal to just sweep it under the carpet because I mean, why should I complain if it's like just part of life now? So I tried that to connect to people. Like you're not alone. We're all hurt. We're all feeling anxiety. The intending to depression, we're all feeling panicked sometimes, you know. So that's the connection, um, and that's basically it. I mean, we have these two concerns: on okay, people expect power metal; they expect us to have epic choruses, wild guitars, and drumming, and vocals, virtuals, vocals, and everything. They want mm -hmm. us to go progressive. They want some ballads. They want to have some Brazilian spices on our music. We know all of that, but then we start writing whatever comes up to our mind. And then after a while, we, we, we start to, to observe the songs, the music, the ideas for the songs. Then we go, okay, maybe there's a ballad missing. Okay, maybe there's a Brazilian spice, in, a spice missing here and that. So it's mm -hmm. a combination of our, our spontaneous creative side to a more rational thinking about okay let's make it uh, round and 
balanced for the expectations of the people. Oh, nice. I love that. I love that you're like, everyone's hurt, but it's okay to, you know, not to say, well, everyone's hurting, so it doesn't matter. It does still matter. I love that. It does still matter, yeah. We should hold each other's hand. We should get a bit more hippie now, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's happening the opposite. People is going the opposite of, from hippies. They get they're more, I think they're defensive, reactive, many times aggressive on the way they express themselves on the internet. But it, it's a process. I think after 14 years, kind of, we will get a bit kinder to each other. The younger generations, I think, have learned more than us adults. That is true. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we can all come to a peaceful world. <laughs> Me too. So how do you feel about touring? I know you guys are touring here. I think on the 20th is when you guys start touring in Brazil. Yeah, we start touring in Brazil. We're still finding partners and bands, you know, to tour with in America, Europe. There's some conversation about going to Japan. So I think the booking thing will probably pick up better after the release of the album. I think many people are waiting, you know, okay, I mean, because it's hard to present Angra as a fresh thing mm -hmm. because it's, we've been out for 30 years, but we still feel young and fresh because this lineup grew, is being, I mean, we are together for 10 years. So it's, we can say it's a young band and we still feel very young and creative and, we have this this fire of presenting our music to people. So hopefully we'll be touring next year all over the world. That's what we're hoping too, because you know you can't leave us out. We wanna we wanna rock with you too. <laughs> Thank you. We'd be glad to go there again. So when you guys are on tour and playing your new songs, how do you feel before you play it for the first time? Are you like excited, nervous? Yeah, be tense because the songs are hard to perform, you know, not very easy to, to play the songs. We have challenged ourselves, you know, into exploring music, musical textures and parts and weird structures to remember. But um, we're very excited because this album really, um, really represents what what we are now so we want to be out there showing what angra has evolved to be after 32 years that's definitely you know it's hard to do especially when you've been around and you have previous albums and of course fans are gonna like you said in the beginning they're going to compare because that's what they have you to compare to so yeah i mean uh since we're together for around 10 years now People are stopping to compare Fabio with other singers, for instance. People are stopping to compare us with our previous lineups and other albums because, I mean, they got used to it. I mean, and new fans are coming up. After the pandemics, a lot of young uh, metal dudes are coming to our concerts. And many times they, they fell in love with metal because of their parents. So nowadays, metal and rock music became like a family thing, you know, because the parents, they present their DVD, they, they see the CD DVD and Metallica stuff. So the kids, they they have this attachment, this emotional attachment with metal, especially because it's something that they've learned. It's a family thing. Right. So it's completely different in my times. I mean, my parents, they didn't understand metal. They, I mean, they never cared about it. But I was never connected uh, to them because of metal. But now yeah. it happens the the opposite. I mean, people, parents, they're very they're very relieved that their kids like metal. They think that that's a good thing. It's a good education for them. So it, it's it's a it's 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 changing. It's a time of change. I think it's a good change. I think especially. Yeah. It connects the parents to the kids. Like, we like all the same music now. It's fine. Yes, yes. It's no more, uh, it's no more of a rebel thing, you know, to like, to 
to go to, to metal to a metal concert is something that make your parents proud with oh he's doing well he's going to a metal concert not to electronic music kind of yeah <laughs> <laughs> so since you'll be touring soon i know um also internationally it sounds like as well is there any tour essential that you can't live without a tour essential yeah whether that be an item or something on the tour that you need to have in place while you're playing anything like that well it's always good to have a good uh, to have good gear to have good equipment you know so we bring a good sound for the people it's always good to have a place, a toilet, you know, a comfortable toilet to shit in peace. Uh, shower is always good too, a place to sleep. Could be a bus, a comfortable bus or in a hotel room. I think it's a basic, you know, for, for surviving. So you yeah. wouldn't get sick. I mean, you have to eat well too. I mean, you need to eat well, healthy and somehow protein and fruits, you know, so mm -hmm. you can endure the tour without going ill too frequently. Oh, that's the basic for me. It's like, okay, so if I have a place to shower, to sleep and shit, and a good <laughs> gear to perform, it's all right. So you just need the three essential S's, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right. Did you face any sort of challenges with making this album? Uh, first one was the fact that we live very far away from each other. So getting everyone together was the first challenge. Then the challenge of really, really making music that would be honest and, you know, like that would, we would express in a very spontaneous way. We mm -hmm. didn't need to force us too much, but fulfilling people's expectation, you know? So right. it's like, okay, I know what people expect. That means that I'm not just making music out of nothing. It means that I have kind of a picture of what we should be. But then mm -hmm. we start to write musical ideas and not, not of, I mean, not always it is what people expect. So you mm -hmm. kind of have to find this balance, you know, in trying to find a music that could be fulfilling their people's expectation, but also truth to ourselves. So that's a challenge too. And then finding a record company that would want to follow our plan to release this year and to tour and all of that. Finding partners is also challenging sometimes. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are doing really well though through all those challenges, so that's a plus. Yeah, yeah that's a plus, very, that's very <laughs> I'm very thankful. So I can't complain. Time. Well, that's that's good. I'm glad that everything came together for you guys because I know like that can be part of the stress is just getting everything together. Yeah, I mean, you need to find the right partners. I mean, no one thrives alone in this world, not with, oh, not in a world that we need to you know we need the publicity we need people to invest money we need people to promote it we need people good professionals to build the whole thing around you i mean you need to find uh, the right partners and finding partners is also a skill that i mm -hmm. learned you know many times in the past i was too aggressive with my partners like too demanding mm -hmm. but it's it's not it shouldn't be like this you have to be humble you have to accept different, um, not only expectations, but um, yeah, the different purposes, you know, from different partners. I think sometimes for humans too, just people in general, like it's hard for us to accept help from other people because some people like doing it themselves. So I think that's also a skill too, is learning how to accept help. You're right. I mean, nowadays, everyone is being taught to be leaders. And if they're not a leader of something or anything, they feel frustrated. And it's very, very hard to build a world only of leaders, you know, because then leaders, if they, 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 if their purpose is to lead and not to create, a, a, to build mm -hmm. uh, on the top of their values, you know, 
building on a valuable ground or on a ground of ground of values is more important than being the leader of the building. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I think people collide a lot because they're fighting to be leaders, not to build stuff. So they just want to say they're in command. They want to be in control, and that's like a newness. Yeah. So I do have one last question for you here. What message would you like to give your fans? Well, first of all, I miss America a lot. I would like to go back as soon as possible. I hope you guys like the album. I hope you enjoy the album. We've been, I mean, um, building this path for, for a long time. Not the 32 years of existence, but also the 10 past years together with Fabio trying you know to to create something that's still angry but still honest and that still expresses what we are now uh i think it's a record for people for everyone who who felt sensitive during the pandemics you know um doubtful insecure fragile in many ways fearful so we try to show people that we we were, we were also fragile. We as, you know, like, um, how do you call it? Rock stars, you know? We also felt that the world, the world was broken somehow. And that was very, very sad and, and fearing. So it's a connection with people. Let's hold our hands. Let's be more like, see ourselves as as equals than highlighting our differences well i love that i think metal needs more of that metal can bring the world together <laughs> yeah i believe that especially because it's so wide and and different you know it's it's metal is not one thing metal is a way of expressing you know it's it's got energy it's got intensity but it's still got sensitivity. It's got so many ranges of music within metal that, I mean, it could probably connect to everyone in the world. Well, I just want to thank you again for doing this interview. It's been awesome talking to you and we can't wait for you to come back to America. We'll be ready. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> I'd be glad to come. Let's hope right. for this for next year. Sounds good. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.